Have you made a commitment to yourself? Have you made a commitment that good is the reality and that you can have a life that you desire by committing to your own practice of good? If you're here, I would presume that you have made that commitment. If you're here, you may be on the verge of making that commitment. But I would like to suggest to you that making the commitment to the good of the universe, to the reality of good, the power of good, the law of good, it will change your life. It has absolutely changed my life. It has shaped the whole course of my existence. And I know for those of you who have a daily practice, you know the power of that. If you don't have a daily practice, find one. Find something that you can commit to that ties you to the power of good, the power of God. And if you don't use the word God, use a different word. Because when we understand that there are these laws of the universe that govern, that are beyond the power of the human mind, beyond the power of what the material senses are telling us, when we recognize that power, it has an effect on our life. And it shows up in lots of little ways. There's a, there's a famous Bible passage, commit thy works unto the Lord and thy way shall be established. Commit thy thoughts unto the Lord and commit thy works unto the Lord and thy thoughts shall be established. Commit thy works unto the Lord and thy thoughts shall be established. Well, let's translate that. If you're not biblical, let's translate that into what common language would say. Commit yourself unto something larger than you, unto a power greater than you, whatever you call that, and your thoughts will be established. If we know that good is real, I think we can all agree on that, and we commit to that, our thoughts are going to, to start moving in the direction of goodness. If we have faith, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. If we have faith in goodness, can we then not assume that as we commit to that idea, we're going to start seeing more good in our life? I'm gonna share a little story. I, as you guys probably know, I was, I did that event on Saturday on relationships and many of you attended that. I hadn't really promoted it as much as I probably should have to sort of get the news out to people so that they could join us. So on Friday, I committed to promoting it more. Well, I didn't want it to come out of my head like, okay, I'm going to think of a really good thing to do, and then I'm going to go do it. What I did was commit to getting outdoors in nature, commit to aligning myself with what I knew was good that was larger than I am. I committed to going for a run. I committed to getting outside and going to this beautiful place where there's a beautiful view. And with the intent of, at some point, I need to do a video and invite everybody. Well, I went for a run. I made a commitment. I didn't know what the video was going to be. I didn't know what I was going to say. I didn't plan it all out. I just made a commitment to something larger than myself so that it wasn't coming from me personally that I have a calling on my life. You all have a calling on your life. Commit to the calling on your life. And let the way of that showing up be apparent to you. But you got to make the commitment. It's like that Goethe quote. Once you commit, all manner of, of support rushes in from the universe. I'll put the quote in the recording so you see that actual quote if you're not familiar with it. So I went for my run, turning it over. Got to that view place and thought, okay, I've committed to doing a video. All right, and I talk in terms of God. So I said, okay, God, put the words of my mouth. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. I don't want it to be acceptable to me personally. I don't want it to be acceptable to you personally. I want this to be something larger than personality. 
This is bigger than us. The fact that you're here means you're called to it. It means you're called to something larger in your life. And that's a really good thing because what that does is it expands our life. So I got to the hillside. I saw the beautiful view. I ended up just doing a video, just letting the words flow. Why do I share that story? Because it, it, was, it was based in a commitment first. When we make the commitment, the ideas come. If we get stuck in our head, in our own personal sense of what's going on in our life, it's a, it's a closed loop. I mean, I'm sure we can all see that. If it's inside our head and it stays inside our head and it's just inside our head, it's just inside our head. And whatever you can think, whatever you can come up with personally, that's as far as you go. Have you ever noticed that you've tried and tried and tried to make your life go forward, but if it's based in you and your own ideas, you keep repeating the same stuff over and over again? Commit your life to something larger than you personally. And your thoughts will be established by the power of the universe, by the power of good, by the law of good. It's a spiritual law that we are governed by, we are reflections of good. The universe has, God has an intent on our life. God has imagined you, has thought you very specifically for a very particular purpose. And if we think we know what that is and we're stuck in our own concept of ourself, we're not yielding to the divine. We're not yielding to that larger picture of who we are. And we're probably operating under all the limiting beliefs that we've carried, on, carried all our lives. We've been taught and we've sort of taken on as our own baggage. We can let that stuff go. We don't have to hold on to those beliefs. We can drop them and see ourselves in terms of the all that is in terms of the creator of the universe, in terms of the creator of who you are, not who you've believed yourself to be. So commit to the idea that there is a larger, higher version of you that is your real being, your real nature, your true nature, that's not based in belief, that's not based in your human history, that's not based in the, the limits that other people have placed on you. And your access to it is committing to it. Commit to the highest version of you. Just make the commitment. It doesn't mean you know everything. It doesn't mean you see the whole picture yet. It just means commit to it. Get on the path. And I would offer the idea that you do that first thing every morning. The very first thing you do when you wake up in the morning, commit yourself to the highest view of you. I don't want to say highest version of you because that is the only version of you. We believe in limited versions of ourselves. That's belief based in suggestion, based in a belief that somehow you're separate from your creator. That somehow you've gotten separated and you're on your own. You got to go out there and do it by yourself. Well, where, where does that path lead? Fear, misunderstanding, lack, limitation, all of that sin, sickness, disease, death. Uh, just take that path all the way down to the end, all the way to death. But you have another path you can choose. <laughs> so like, choose the other path. So wake up in the morning and choose that path of all possibility, all good, all health. Those of you struggling with physical stuff, choose health. Make a commitment to, I know that my true nature, my true being is 100% healthy. That's how I was made. That is my natural state. There's so much in the media that would try to convince you that your natural state is decline. 
And that, oh gosh, as you get older, I put in air quotes, because there is no such thing. As I get older, I'm subject to X, Y, Z. Don't buy it. Don't take it on. Choose, health is my natural state. As I understand more of my health, I can express more and more of it for the rest of my days. It should be an increasing proposition, not a decreasing proposition. Accept that idea. Accept the possibility of all good being yours. This is your inheritance. This is what you've been given just by virtue of showing up. So accept it, accept the gift first thing in the morning and then commit to that. And then you're open to your thoughts being established on that path. Because when you commit to that path, all the ideas that come to you are the ideas that support that. And you become more aware of those ideas. And those ideas, good always trumps error. Good always trumps evil. Truth always outweighs evil, error. Truth always wins. So commit to truth. Commit to good. Commit to God, for those who use that word. Commit to God's view of you. Start seeing yourself in that light. So when you have that tape running in your head that's based in the belief that you're limited and we can go on to all the negative things that would come up in thought, that you have a history that you need to carry forward. When that tape starts playing in your head, what do you do? We talked last week about stop, look, and listen. A lot of us grew up with that campaign in the schools. Stop, look, and listen. S just stop, just interrupt the thought. Mel Robbins actually is, is, I don't know if you guys know Mel Robbins, but she's doing a big campaign right now. You know, put your hands on your heart. I'm okay, I'm loved, I'm safe. Just interrupt the thought that there's something negative going on here. Stop. Look at who you truly are. And then listen for those ideas. As you commit to that path, the ideas are established. And be open to accepting those ideas. Be open to accepting the truth. Jesus talked about little children being very willing and able to take on. He loved little children because they were so willing to take on a new idea. We can be childlike. We don't have to necessarily be children again, but we can be childlike. We can have a childlike thought. We can have the humility to let go of that personal sense of ourselves, that egoic, false ego thing, and really embrace who you truly are and see where that goes and watch it grow. And that's why I am such a proponent of a daily practice. Because as you do it every day, you'll start to notice your relationships are better. You're not getting discouraged or depressed or disrupted by the stuff around you as much as you used to. Things don't bug you as much. Somebody cuts you off on the road, you have compassion. And you say, you know, they must have been in a hurry. Bless their pointy little heads. You know, bless their hearts. It's like, forgive them, they know not what they do. And the better, the better view you have of others, as we talked about on Saturday, the, the higher view you have of others, the better your experience is going to be with them. So it actually, <laughs> it helps you out. The higher you see others, the more that's what you experience in your relationship with them. So I don't know, it's like a win-win. Okay, let's bring it in.
Okay, those of you who know me well know that during silence, a lot of times something will come crashing through. This is not, this, today was nothing about what I thought I was going to say. So I show up, I do all of my preparation in the morning. I pray, I meditate, I go running, I do my stuff, my daily routine. I show up and I say, okay, God, what would you have me say? And I'll have a little plan of something, but nine times out of 10, what comes out of my mouth is nothing about what I've thought I was going to say. That happened today. So in silence, I get the memo, oh, I'm supposed to share this other story. So it actually is, it does follow in line with what I was just talking about. I was in a mastermind. Um, we had been asked over the, the course of a couple of weeks before to come up with something to offer on Black Friday, right? This is a whole big group, a bunch of business entrepreneurs. I hadn't, I thought about it. I hadn't really committed to something. And the head of this mastermind said, okay, and there are 150 people there. It says, who's, who's got a Black Friday offer? I raised my hand before I had one. I made a commitment to saying it. And I thought before he gets to me, I was like the third person in line. Before he gets to me, I'll have one. I made the commitment. And right after I made that commitment, it took, it took a lot of courage, like kind of daring, like really put yourself out there, get beyond your limited view of yourself, that this has to be hard, that this has to take a long time. Just commit to the process. By the time he got to me, actually it wasn't even by the time, because he he'd ended up not going to people, but within a matter of seconds after I made the commitment, a very clear thought came through. I went, oh, that's easy. And I had spent the week noodling with the idea and not coming up with anything because I hadn't really made the commitment. So I'm saying this is practical. This is a practical idea. Make the commitment and the thoughts will be established. Whatever it is, and this applies not only to this science, the law of good, it applies to whatever you're doing in your life. It's a law. It's a spiritual law. Make the commitment, commit thy works unto good, and thy thoughts shall be established. It's a spiritual law. Try it. So I made a commitment before I intellectually even knew what I was going to say. And then the thought came in immediately. Very clear, very simple, done. Wow. And I just went, oh, that's interesting. Because I was willing to make the commitment even before I had the idea, before I had the idea. Hear that? Little I. I made the commitment. The idea was there for me. But that door didn't open until I committed. So I would just love to offer this to all of us that we try it today. Make a commitment to something that is higher than you, some good that you have a desire for that you haven't really seen fully yet. Commit to it and then watch what happens in your thought. Guaranteed, you're gonna be inspired and lifted to a higher level. Okay, those of you visiting, I hope I see you tomorrow. And those of you visiting, when I send the, oh, you know what, I can't. Um, if you haven't signed up, go to thischoicematters.us and put in your email to sign up for this. It'll put you on this email list so that I, you'll get the recording for today. And in the recording, there's a place to book an appointment with me. So I'd love to meet with you and just find out what your story is and who you are and if there's anything that I can offer to you that, you know, support you let you know of, I don't know, just find out a little bit about you. So um, that link is in the email. If for some reason you don't want to do that, you can also go to meetwithlisataylor.com and set up an appointment there. Those of you who are in Morning Metaphys, if you are a VIP and you haven't made your appointment for this month, would you please do it this week so that we don't have too many of those stacked up month after month? Make your appointments. All right, lots of love, you guys. Have a wonderful day. I do go a little long. Lots of love. See you tomorrow. Bye.